Verse 4, in her attitude. Look at this. Verse 4, let it be the hidden person of the heart. You know what the book of Proverbs says? It says a woman that God is pleased with is a quiet, not a loud, running around, you can hear him coming a mile away, kind of gruff, tough sergeant. Have you read the book of Proverbs? It portrays that godly woman as a quiet, very confident, very accomplished woman. That's how Peter describes her. She has a, a quiet, submissive, imperishable quality about her. She's very confident in her calling. She's not chafing against it. She's not trying to be someone else. She's not trying to be, you know, rising up in the world. She's fulfilling her role that God has given her. And there's great strength in that. There's great strength in knowing that, that a quiet, gentle spirit is precious in God's sight. Her attitude. Her attitude is gentle and quiet, which God is looking for. Finally, her attention. Verses 5 and 6. For in the former times, the holy women also who hoped in God used to adorn themselves. They adorn themselves in this submissive way, this modest way, this quiet and uh, gentle way. They adorn themselves this way, being submissive to their own husbands. And this is a different word, submissive. This is not hupotasso, lining up like this. This is hupakuo, uh, which means listening and, and keeping in touch with. And, and it's interesting, the word pictures that are here, but they had this submissiveness to them. Uh, and Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you have become her children, not if you call your husband Lord, but if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. What does that mean? Well, if you live this way that Peter says, if you start focusing your life and, and redirecting your life around the home, if you start redirecting your life around your children, and when your children are gone, instead of going off to double your income and getting all that money for the golden years, you start ministering to younger women and teaching them to stay home and to raise godly children. If you start dressing without the slits and the plunging this and the tight here and all the sparkles there, you'll start being made fun of by the world. They'll say, what's wrong with you? He says, verse 6, do what is right and don't be frightened with any fear. Well, what's God's order for a woman? God's order for a woman is that she be submissive to her calling in God's sight, in the church, in the home, in her personal life. Secondly, that she be utterly modest. And if you have any doubts what modesty is, talk to a godly, virtuous, older woman. And let her tell you how provocative you can be if you're not careful in your dress. Don't tell, let your husband tell you, I want you to look flashy. Say, husband, God's looking at me more than you. I want to look right in his sight. Thirdly, a quiet and gentle spirit. Don't march in there and control. That's why it's so difficult having women working in corporate life. Because they're pushed forward in corporate life to, to put themselves forward. And yet in the church and home they're not supposed to. And there's a constant tension. And that's why Peter says, put your focus somewhere else than out there. And finally, he says there, let your attitude and attention be toward being a woman that is pleasing. And basically this last point is be feminine even if it costs something. Well, this morning, my prayer is that every one of you ladies of any age will have the desire to just like that woman in Mark 14, every single day of your life, offer something that is precious, costless, priceless to God. And that is an adornment that pleases Him. An attitude that pleases Him. Actions that line up with Him. Attention on what He says is most vital for you to attend to. And He says, that's precious to me. And that should be precious to us.